All right, today we're going to be looking at the Sailor Fude Manon brush style fountain pen. Oof, what a mouthful. This pen has a really unique angled tip or nib that can give you a lot of cool results when you're doing handwriting, when you're doing drawing, when you're doing sketching. Um, it's got a lot of potential for uh, varied marks. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pen itself. It has a plastic body with a bamboo green color, um, and you can't see it in the photo, but there's a nice little notch on the cap that can prevent the pen from rolling around. And the pen, I would say, is a lot larger than you would normally expect for a fountain pen or even for just a regular writing pen. It's very tall, but it's balanced by the fact that it's really lightweight. And this pen I actually received as a birthday gift, which was really nice from my friends Karen and Paige. And so they gave me the pen itself, and then they also went ahead and gave me the converter, which I think is really great because I love being able to put different kinds of inks into the pen that uh, I have from my collection. Here's a picture of the converter. It is a typical converter, the small plastic one where you twirl the end of it to draw the ink into the reservoir. Um, this converter in particular you use by putting it into the pen and then dipping the pen into the ink bottle, which we'll take a look at that in just a second. Now the ink that I'm going to put into the pen is Deatramentis Document Ink Brown, another mouthful. Deatramentis is a German uh, brand ink that I've become a really big fan of because it is very waterproof, it's very tight ink, and I also think that the brown in particular is a really unique brown. It's very red. It has a lot of saturation. I actually made a little video clip a while back showcasing some of the properties of the Deatramentis ink, um, which again I say is very rich. I love the rich quality of the hue, and uh, you can use it for a fountain pen, you can use it for dip pen. As you saw, you could even use it as a brush uh, kind of ink where you brush it on or do washes. And again, my favorite thing of all is that it's completely waterproof when it's dry, which a lot of inks claim to be, but Deatramentis is definitely that. Here's a picture of the converter going into the ink bottle, the Deatramentis. And so again, you want to stick the uh, converter onto the pen and then draw it up with the little kind of twisty knob on the back side. Um, maybe we can do a little video or showing of that later if that's something everyone would want to see. Now here's a picture of the nib, this really unique angled nib. The nib is bent at 55 degrees, which is pretty steep. And what it does is it gives you a lot of different line qualities and line weights based on how you're tipping the pen or tipping it to your paper. So if you were to hold the pen flat and kind of normal to the paper, you would get a very broad kind of line. Um, and the ink itself also is very juicy, like it really flows out of the pen when you're holding it at this angle. And if you were to tip or move your wrist, you could also hold it so that the line is finer and it's more pointed um, to give yourself really detailed kind of lines or detailed sort of writing. And the potential, I think, in handwriting would be if you were to twist the pen back and forth, you could create a lot of interesting uh, calligraphy style writing. I think the origin of the pen itself is for uh, calligraphy but I think it's a great tool for drawing and for sketching. So here's an example of some of those different line weights you can get. So when the pen is held flat, you get a really nice wide line. You can even notice a little bit of that kind of juicy ink. And then there's the pen on its side where it's really fine and it can even skip a little bit. Now there's the pen laying down some really thick ink. There it is laying down some of those finer lines. And again, if you kind of uh, jam it on there really quickly. It's almost like a brush. And then here's my very unorthodox use of it, where if you flip it over, I love that it gets this really thin hatching style look to the ink. Um, so that's why they call it the, the Fude, because it has a brush-like quality. They call it the Fude and the Manon for fountain pen. It has these two very unique wine qualities all in one pen. Here's a different angle on the pen, so we can see how changing the angle of it affects the line weight. So when you hold it straight up and down, or as straight as possible, you get the nice wide lines. If you kind of tilt it really far on its edge, you can get those very skinny lines. And again, if you run it very quickly, it actually skips a little bit, just like a brush. And that's what gives it that uh, brush style term or brush style name. 
So when you're doing writing, you can get a lot of nice little uh, thick pools of the ink. So you can see some of the ink pulling up. And then of course, if you turn it, you can get some nice fine lines as well. And again, I tend to use it more for drawing. And so I think my mentality is more about how to draw with it. So there's the brush style. There's again, the very unorthodox kind of flipping it over to get the really fine hatching. You could do that by just changing the angle of the pen, but I think flipping it over gives you a really uh, definitive kind of hatching uh, ability. So there's a little bit of the line weight changing as you move your hand or kind of twist the nib, and then it's flipped back over on its edge. Um, I don't know if that's correct. I don't know if that's the right way to use it, but I've been using it that way, and I really like the, the very fine line weight that comes out of it by flipping it over. So typically when I'm doing sketching, especially urban sketching, I would do a very fine, sort of detailed line drawing. Um, detailed not in terms of uh, speed, I actually kind of draw pretty quick when I'm doing the urban sketch, but I work on doing the outside shape and then I draw in the lighting, so kind of where I see the shadows or the big areas of shadow. And again, when I have it flipped over, um, the line weight reminds me a lot of a really fine-tipped micron, like almost that 001 or pardon me, excuse me, the zero one one weight, um, kind of that zero one zero two 2 weight. Uh, you can get really, really small little shapes, really, really small little detail. And then when you're ready, you can flip it back over to that wider side and then start to do some brush style moves where you're doing big kind of patches of ink. Um, as you saw earlier, if you sort of swipe it really fast, it skips and gives you some nice kind of organic quality to the line. Um, but I love that I can just flip it over and use it like a fill. Like I can do these really nice patches of uh, ink that are rich and filled and solid um, so that my urban sketch especially uh, has some, some value and some lighting quality very quickly. And so, you know, you can work with it like that and then you can flip it back over again to do a lot of hatching. So if you want to do some more subtle values, subtle lighting, um, you can get really, really fine lines with this pen. Um, and normally you'd have to use a lot of different pens, like maybe you have different microns or different kinds of other technical pens and you're swapping them in and out and uncapping them and recapping them and losing track of them. And this pen uh, feels like three or even five tools all in one. Um, which is what attracts me a lot to it as a sketching tool. Now here's a drawing that's a little bit more slowed down or it's a little bit of a slower drawing so you can see some of that fine line quality uh, where again I'm using the uh, possibly <laughs> totally incorrect hand with it where I flip the pen over on its back um, so that the tip is really nice and pointed. Um, so this is a little sketch I made uh, of a portrait or of a little head um, and so I'm walking through or doing the same steps as I did with the tree, which is a lot of times I start with the line drawing, um, kind of getting all the basic shapes in, and then I will slowly add the uh, details and the type of lighting or the type of shading um, through hatching or those big fills of ink. Um, but why don't we let that music kick up a little bit? We can just watch how this goes. So now that the majority of the line work is on there, I can start to add small details and shading. Um, and again, the fact that I don't have to use different pens, I can just use this one pen and get variety of line from uh, one tool versus swapping out all these different tools um, is a very unique thing about this Sailor pen. And uh, I think it's great for urban sketch or sketching outdoors, especially because um, we're always trying to keep our weight light or not have as many materials um, so that it's easier to travel. And so 
I've been actually taking this pen out with just my sketchbook. So just one book, one pen, um, and getting some really nice drawings and results. But as you can see here, it's also great for illustration. There's also really good quality to it if you're sitting down and making a tighter drawing or a tighter piece of work. Um, here's the brush style ability with it where you can flip it back over, use that 55 degree angle, that kind of flat angle of the nib, and then start to get these nice little fills, nice little dark patches of ink. Um, and again, I chose the Detrimentus because when that ink pools up or gets solid, it has a really nice, rich kind of red quality to it that I like a lot. There's the flip back over to the other side where it's got the thin hatching quality um, which normally you get that from technical pens, again, like Microns or the Copic Multiliner. Um, lots of pens that I use regularly uh, and that I love. And so I'm grateful and happy to see that this Sailor pen can mimic that effect that I like a lot, where I turn the pen on its side and shade really, really fine um, to get some really nice white values with the hatching. And so, again, with the, the drawing, you can do the line work, you can do the big fills, you can do the tiniest little details. You can see this sketch is pretty small. It's you know probably no more than about an inch or an inch and a half in size. Um, and so the pen is very, uh, very capable of doing the finest kind of work. So let's go ahead and uh, kick that music back on and just watch a little bit more drawing. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, this is again the Sailor Fude Manon brush style fountain pen. The pen is normally a cartridge based pen, but you can get a converter. Again, I got a little converter when my good friends gave me this for my birthday. And I think the converter is a great idea so that you're able to use any kind of waterproof ink or fountain pen ink that you want. Um, they also make a different style of this pen that has a angle that is not as steep. Um, it's kind of a lower angle, but uh, again, a really cool pen. Definitely check it out for urban sketch, for illustration. Um, I think it's just one of those tools if you like ink or if you like pens. And especially if you're a fountain pen fan and you do a lot of calligraphy or writing, this is definitely a nice one, I think, to have in your little toolbox. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>